Hello and welcome back to US Code Jam on Bits and Bytes Online. Today we are finishing up our Blockly Code Adventures unit um, with an activity called Password Confirmation. So if you did beginner password, this is very similar to that. Um, but instead of just simply matching our password, we're going to limit the number of attempts you have to, ma um, to match said password. So we're kind of taking the next step in validating a password entry. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. In a new tab, you're going to pull up developers.google.com backslash Blockly. Um, and then you're going to be taken to this page. I'm already on it from an earlier activity. Um, you will also have default code here. It will look different than mine, but that's okay. Just grab that first block at the top of the page and drag it on over to the trash can to clear the workspace so that we can start with a fresh, clean workspace. Um, you will be able to see what the code will look like probably in JavaScript as the default as we build, and we'll talk a little bit about it at the end. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create three passwords, three variables this time. Sorry, not three passwords, three variables. Go to the variables drawer, click on the create variable button and type in password, click OK. Repeat that process and name a variable um, confirm password. Click OK. And finally, you're going to name a variable tries because we are limiting the number of tries or attempts. Um, so the first thing we're going to do with those variables is give a couple of them initial numbers, initial values to do. So we're going to get two of these set blocks. And we're going to use the drop down on the first one to change it from tries to count. And then make sure your second one is set to tries. So mine is automatically, but if yours isn't, use the drop down, change it to tries. Then go to math, and we're going to get this number block and put it after count. That one's going to stay at zero. So we're going to start the program with count equal to zero. But we're going to go back to the math drawer, get that same block attach it to tries and set it to three. So this is going to keep count of how many times we've attempted the password and this is going to count down each time we try. So when this equals three and this equals zero, when they flip flop basically, we will be out of attempts. Um, and we'll see that a little bit more as we build the code. So let's, the next step is to go to the um, loops drawer and we're going to get the repeat while do block and attach it to the bottom of our code. Then go to the logic drawer and get this blank equals blank block. Attach it after the while. Use the drop down to change it to greater than. Yes, greater than. Or less than, sorry, that's less than. If we read that, three is less than four. Um, so that's the less than or equal to. Right, so first we're going to have, we're going to do um, count. So get the count block from variables, put it on the left of the less than or equal to sign. Then go back to math and get the number. Change that zero to two. Inside of this while block, we're going to ask people to um, set the password. So go back to variables and get two of these set blocks. On the first one, use the drop down to change it to password. On the second one, use the drop down to change it to confirm password. And then we're going to go to the text drawer and get a um, prompt with text message. So we're going to get two of these, attach one to password, Go back to text and get a second and attach it to confirm password. Um, instead of ABC on the first one, I'm going to enter a message that says, please enter password. And on the second, I'm going to enter a message that says, please confirm password. So you entered it once. We want you to enter it again to make sure that you know what you typed and things match. Um, and we'll validate it next to see if it actually does. So next we're going to go to our logic drawer and get this if do block. 
attach it to the set blocks inside our while loop. Um, we're going to use the gear to add an else to our if statement and then click the blue gear again to be done. And now we're going to set our condition. So we're checking to see if password equals confirm password. So go to logic and get the blank equals blank block, attach it to if, and then go to variables. And for this one, it doesn't matter, but I am going to do password on the left and confirm password on the right of the equal sign. So if those match, we're going to print a success message. So go to text and we're just going to look for print ABC. Okay. And we're going to do password matches. And because we're in a loop and we, if the passwords match on the first try, we want to break out of this loop. Otherwise it will make us repeat this three times. And we don't need to do that because we've already successfully matched the passwords. So we're going to get a breakout block, which will allow us to break out of a loop. So right here, like break out of loop and attach it to print. Okay. Um, our other condition is if they don't match. So we're going to print out a um, password does not ma match message to print. Password doesn't match. And then we're going to do two things here. So these are keeping track of how many times we go through the loop and how many tries we have. We're allowed three tries when we start, and with each attempt, we decrease by one. And the count will track up to three, or however many. So the count just keeps track of how many. So remember, once we go over two here, um, our while loop won't execute. So we're going to go to the variables drawer and get two of these change blocks. Change the first one to count. And we're going to change count by one each time. So that lets us know we've gone through one time um, or two or three, however many tries. And then tries is going to limit how many times we go through. Um, but we're counting down. So we're going to change that to a negative one. So we're going to change by a negative one. And then we're going to um, print out how many tries we have left. So go to text and we're going to get print ABC and go to text again and get create text with. And we're going to use the blank text block right here and just type in number of tries left and then go to the variable store and get that variable. So the variable will have tri tr changed right before this. Okay. Um, and then go, the final step will be, um, instead of breaking out of the loop, we're going to continue with the loop iteration. So go to loops, um, and you, and add that breakout there, use the drop down to change it to continue. Typically in text coding, you won't need that continue block. Um, it's very rare that you'll use it at least in your starting programs, but we're going to go ahead and use it for this activity. So let's give it a try. I'm going to enter silly passwords again. So let's do egg. Eggs. Okay. Passwords don't match. Hit okay. I have two tries left. So then we'll do cat. Password doesn't match. Okay, I have one try left. And then let's do, let's do, let's see what happens if I don't match them. Password doesn't match. Number of tries left is zero. So the program ends. Um, you don't get any more attempts. So if you're trying to send into account, most likely that would be when you get locked out of your account. Um, if we want to run that just to see how it works when we match something. By the way, these are horrible passwords. Do not use these. Um, we're just matching words. So password matches. I click OK. Program's done. A um, couple things left. Let's look at, you can see the JavaScript language here. It creates the variables. It then initializes the counts and the tries. Apparently that's how we scroll. Um, and then we have our while loop with the prompts for input. 
the validation and the warnings and counts and everything. So that's all right there. There's more punctuation because it's using the um, browser pop-up. We have these window alerts and window prompts that you see. That's what those are for in Python, which is the other one. It's a little bit busier. Again, it validates your input to make sure that you've in entered something that's correct or expected. It initializes all our variables to none, which is fine. They get fixed later. Again, JavaScript and Python don't use um, data types when you create a variable. So that means that one thing could be an integer or intended to be an integer when, um, when you enter it, but it, or you can change it to a string later. I will note that in Python, um, everything's treated as a, as a string if it's entered by the user until you convert it. Um, so just something to keep in mind if you start working with this on your own. But again, you can see the whole program here, a little less syntax. So if you're just starting with text-based, um, Python is really the best to go with because it, as you can see you don't have to worry about as many curly brackets or parentheses and stuff like that. There's still some, but not as many. It's more about your um, indentation and spacing. But it's a little easier if you're just getting started with a text-based language and or just typing, just starting to type. Um, and Python actually can do quite a lot. It's pretty cool. Not saying the other languages can't, but it's pretty cool what Python's able to do oftentimes with less text in comparison to the um, less code in comparison to some of the other tech, uh, code languages. Um, so usually some of our challenge modes for this one are usually um, passwords have more than, they just don't have to match, right? They have to be a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters and so many characters long and have special characters or numbers in them. So you can try adding maybe one of those in as a requirement. So not only does it have to match, but your word has to have an uppercase letter or your word has to have a number somewhere in it and try to figure out how to validate both the matching and so if they match and if they have that number in them. So that would be two separate validation statements. Um, so you can also rewrite the code so that you only enter the confirmed password if they don't, only re-enter the confirmed password if they don't match. So right now the code prompts you to re-enter the original password and the confirmed password. Um, so it would be, if you're trying to guess your password and log into an account, you would only have to re-enter one password, not two. So you could rewrite the program so that when um, you're prompted for that match, you are only writing, you're only prompted for confirmed password and not set password. That's actually pretty easy. Um, if you, but you're going to have to look at the code to figure out how you could do it. You're not actually adding or you're just uh, moving some stuff around. Our last challenge is um, to add in a username to see if, and validate that one. You can do whatever kind of validation you want on that, but just add in some extra code to validate. Other than that, we are done with this activity for today. If you would like to come to our live session, you can head over to our website, youthcodejam.org, under Jam at Home. Um, go to Bits and Bytes. It'll take you to this special landing page. We are working, um, this program is now sponsored by Palo Alto College, and they are nicely handing, handling a lot of the registration stuff for us. So you will actually register through them by clicking on this link or going directly to alamo.edu um, slash pack slash after school programs. Um, or you can type in Palo Alto College after school programs. I think this page should show up. Um, they have upcoming session information available with some descriptions of the courses as best as we've been able to provide them with. Um, sometimes things change. But um, you'll register through them. It is free to attend still. So I think the next one should be, so this will be the next activity to register for. Um, and the registration block is down here. So you can register for all of them. We would love to see you guys. We meet Mondays and Wednesdays from 4.30 to 5.30 Central Time. Um, our live sessions are really fun. We do the activities. We show off projects. Sometimes, depending on how much time is left, we um, might play a few games. But we're having a lot of fun in the live session, so if you're able to, we would really love to have you there. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today, so have a great day, and I hope to see you at a live session.